Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude, thebiodude.com. You can come visit my retail showroom here in Houston, Texas, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. And today in front of me, I have an Exoterra 18 by 18 by 24. And I am going to show you guys how to use my Terra Fauna Bioactive Kit to construct a living, self-cleaning, self-maintaining ecosystem for, your for a Felsuma laticata day gecko, which is also called the gold dust day gecko. Now these geckos are really cool They're because they are from northwest Madagascar. They spend a lot of their time um, on the outskirts of the canopy basking, soaking in the sun. Uh, these guys have really necessary husbandry requirements such as UVB, hotspot, humidity, things like that. And I'm going to show you guys what different products that you can use to provide the UVB to provide the heat and everything else. Uh, so, the so the specimen that you see before me is an adult male. They are generally, they're one of the, sm not the smaller, but they're in the smaller medium sized, I guess is the best way to put it, in the Felsuma family, with the grandest being one of the largest, which is also from Madagascar. Uh, you know, so I'm really, really excited to get these guys uh, established here. So I have an 18 by 18 by 24 in front of me with one of my 16 inch LEDs uh, with my props on them. Uh, there are a lot of different lighting avenues that we can use for your plants in your hotspot and I'll go over that with you guys today. But let's get building. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put down the drainage layer. So as I'm sure a lot of you guys noticed, I have an all new drainage layer. I love this stuff. Um, it, this is the type of drainage that they use in baseball fields for professionals. Uh, it, it, the water passes right through it, just like the perlite. It's not very heavy. It's slightly heavier than what the original Hydro Grow was, but it's 100% natural. And you can see the water level much clearer for maintenance of your terrarium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my base layer of Hydro Grow in here. Now, with uh, day geckos in general, they like to have humidity spikes throughout the day in the aspect of they don't like it to be consistently wet all the time. They like it to get pretty hot, a hot spot of around 95 degrees with a cool side of around 65 to 70. And at nighttime, they like it to drop, you know, within to the high, high 60s to very, very low 70s. They like having a hot spot with humidity spikes, like I said, throughout the day. So it's very, very important that when we're keeping them, that we give them those various spikes. Because when you have those spikes, you start replicating the Madagascar's natural flow of the weather. So as of right now, I have about a two inch layer of my hydro grow in here. I have it nice and even. So with the hydro grow, uh, it does, it still has the exact same principles in the aspect of it creates an even layer. So unlike the Lika, it doesn't create a layer like this, which can cause soil to get mixed in. Essentially, this has the weight and the integrity that you don't need to use the screen. While functioning just as efficient for catching excess soil out of your terra fauna for your uh, drainage layer. But for some people like to use screens, I'm going to go ahead and put one in here anyway. So here's the screen that will come with your kit, which fits perfectly. That's cut specifically for your 18 by 18. Uh, you could keep a small day gecko in, an, in a 12 by 12 by 18. Uh, I would say for a good amount of its life, but I highly recommend that you, you know, keep them in something larger because these, liz these lizards are very, very active and they will do whatever they can, you know, to explore every section of the terrarium because they're very inquisitive and they're actually very intelligent. So as you can see, I opened up my Terra Fauna right here. The 18 by 18 by 24 kit includes two bags of Hydro Grow and three bags of Fauna. Now, if you compare that to the Terra Flora, the Terra Flora includes three bags of Hydro Grow. The reason you don't need as much of a drainage layer is because there's not gonna be as much excess water passing through. So with that, you want to go with a slightly deeper soil to provide them with larger types of plants. And if you have a large enough enclosure, trees, which I can tell you they would absolutely love if you gave them a small yucca tree or hibiscus or something that has broad leaves uh, that also retains water in its axles, if available, like a large bromeliad, to give them options for water and things like that. So I got two bags in here so far. 
I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add in my one more bag right here. And as you can see, I only wet one of the bags. With the high humidity down here, my soils have been maintaining their humidity in the bags a little bit more, which is causing me to not have to put in as much. So the terra fauna is gonna drain exactly as I say it does. It's gonna hold a little bit more water than the terra flora, which allows you to have those humidity spikes. So with maintaining this with your day gecko inside, you're gonna wanna be essentially misting this cage one to two times a day uh, to maintain their, your moisture levels and things like that. And it's gonna be different for everybody. So as you can see right here, uh, I went in and added my substrate as well as you know the drainage layer with the screen. So now the next step is adding in the first layer of biodegradables, which is the spag moss. And just so that way you guys know, I did already add the BioShot in here. Um, I specifically bagged these bags just a couple minutes ago, and I just put the BioShot in here. So I apologize that I don't have the BioShot bag to show me dumping it in, but all three of the bags temporarily had the BioShot in it to keep uh, the start of the biological processes. And a lot of people ask me, well, Josh, what does the BioShot do? Essentially what the BioShot does is it jumpstarts your terrarium by putting in natural organic processes that break down organic matter, such as feces, shed, plant matter, leaves, biodegradables, and turns it into organic nutrition for your plants. It also implements mycorrhizal fungus and archaea bacteria, which help outcompete the negative bacteria in your soil to make sure everything stays nice and cycled and healthy, thus creating your bioactivity. So then I'm gonna dump in the spag moss in here, and I have it to be pretty wet. You can add in other types of cleanup crews as well. Um, and it's actually recommended with day geckos, especially larger isopods, because they will relish larger isopods if given the opportunity. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, they not, so they do eat insects, but they are also nectar eaters. So it's really important that you provide other types of diets for them uh, to supplement their occasional insect protein that they're gonna want. So you can see I got the spag moss mixed completely with the, with the bio shot and the terra fauna. The next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and add is the leaf litter. Now the leaf litter, I want you guys to think of it as the fuel, just like the spag moss. So as the leaves break down, it's creating nutrition. And the nutrition then rejuvenates the soil as well as the plants, allowing everything to grow happy and healthy. And that's the most important. We, we try to make it as easy as possible here for you at the bio dude. So next, I'm just gonna mix it up here. And now I'm gonna add one more component here, which is a brand new product that I'm really excited to launch here. And that's called the paperback bark, which is harvested directly out of California, uh, ethically and legally. Now this stuff is really, really light. This maybe weighs half an ounce. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna break off parts of it. So like the cork bark pieces and other things, this is gonna create microbial hotspots for not only the bio shop, but for the bugs. And what they're gonna do is slowly break it down and then a bunch of essential funguses and bacteria are gonna envelop these and create organic hotspots in your terrarium. I like that. I like how that looks all mixed up there. And you can see it's a, it's a really thorough and solid mix. So what I'm gonna do next is we have the leaf litter, all the biodegradables, and all of the bioactive essence in here. I wanna discuss lighting with you guys. So day geckos do require a hot spot since they are from Madagascar, as well as UVB. So as far as the UVB options goes, I highly recommend using a T5 fixture uh, in the Arcadia 6% UVB, which you can see, um, I don't have any on the table because I am completely sold out of Arcadia but I do have it on my Cuban false chameleon right here, or my false chameleon all, sorry. So this is the T5 fixture with a 6% with a Arcadia uh, that you wanna replace every eight months or so. If uh, you don't wanna go with the T5, the coil bulbs are an option, but I do not recommend them because a lot of people like to go the canopy option, which I'll show you. So obviously, since we're going bio and using live plants, we need to have light to sustain the plants as well as help provide the day and night cycle. So the first thing that we can do 
uh, is go with my 16 inch LED, which depending on what size kit that you buy is included. With that, you use the reptile dome, uh, something uh, right like this. And then you put this right up top here with your UVB and you can use two different types of lights. So what I like to do is me personally, I'll start off with the 25. I always start off with less and then work my way up. Uh, and I'll have this moonlight bulb on 24 hours a day. I'll never turn it off. Then at nighttime, the UVB light and the BioDude LED are turned off. So 12 on, 12 off. This helps create the day and night cycle. If you don't want to provide heat at night, you can also go with a daytime bulb like this that you can have on during the daytime and turn it off at night. It all depends on where you live and how hot and how cool it is in your house. There's a lot of factors that you'll have to play with to make sure that you're providing you know, the proper care. As I said earlier, I like to go with like a 95, uh, uh, 92 to 95 uh, degree hotspot with a cool end of 70. The other options are to go with canopy tops. So what some people like to do is use my six inch grow and glow LED and they'll physically put this in either canopy top. Um, and then some people will go the double option and go the, the, put the plant light on one side, the heat bulb on the other side, and then a UVB strip in conjunction with this. And that also works extremely well. It really just depends on what you wanna use. But again, it's very, very important that you do provide UVB. So I've talked a lot, let's get building. So in the wild, these guys love to have the ability to go in and out of tubes, bamboo. Uh, well, it's like bamboo, but it's not. Uh, as well as have options for getting access to water. And that's really important. So as you see, I got a big cork tube here and I am gonna be using this as almost a planter, which I'll show you guys how I'm gonna be doing that. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this right here like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this smaller tube here I think I'm gonna go, actually I'm gonna wait on that. So, let's see here. Definitely want, definitely want some bamboo in here. So, bamboo, bamboo number two. Okay. I like that. So the, so the ladder quarters will be small enough to, to go in and out of here. But uh, you know, for a larger day gecko, you're gonna want something a little bit bigger. Next are plants. So I grabbed a couple different types of plants here. So the first one is one of my large bromeliads. And so this is the, one of the dude's choice ones that I sell for around $25. This is a Neo Regalia, I think. I can't, I, I can't remember the name, but they're, they're awesome. They're very easy to grow. I have a bird's nest fern because again, it can hold water in here. And of course the bromeliad will hold water in its axles. I got a split leaf philodendron for some height and the broad leaved as aspect that day geckos love so much. And then of course I got another water retention plant right here called a sanservia, also known as a snake plant, which do really, really well. So what I'm gonna do with the bromeliad is I'm actually gonna plant the bromeliad right above here, right like this. So I'm gonna pull this out. Let me see if I can get this to fit in here. Cause that's gonna be, nope. So I lie, the bromeliad's gonna actually go right here on the floor. Now, bromeliads are considered epiphytes, which means that they don't grow on the ground. Uh, they grow above the tree, uh, like in, in, the, in the canopy. However, you can successfully grow them in the ground, i.e. a potted plant, if you have the proper type of soil that drains effectively. And that's the most important thing, is how well the soil drains. Okay, then I'm gonna take the split leaf philodendron. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull this out real quick. I'm actually gonna put this in the very back. I'm gonna pull off a big chunk of substrate, plop that in the back. There we go. Yeah, so this gives it a little bit of depth in the back. And what's gonna happen is this plant is gonna keep growing up and up and up, but not too close to the hot spot. 
Okay, perfect. So I got this here. That right here. I like that because he can bask. He can bask right there. I'll be able to find a way to get that to stay too. And then we got, of course, the bird's nest fern and the sans servia. So the bird's nest fern, I'm actually going to put, I think, back here. Right like this. Yeah, I like that. So it's a lower light fern, so the, the cork is going to be blocking it just enough. So that way it's not going to be a problem. Then I'm going to put my sans servia right here in the front. And then that leaves us room right up here in the corner for a water dish, which is also very, very important. Remember, they love options. So it's excellent to give them options in that way. And I'm going to put the exoterra water dish right here. Okay. So some things that I love is that it's really crowded on the bottom and emptier on the top. Now, normally for most, for most lizards, you're gonna, be, you're gonna want it to be a little bit more dense. But just remember, day geckos don't have a problem coming out in the open to bask. In the wild, a lot of naturalists have said that you know, when they've encountered day geckos, they're always out um, on top of the leaves, the broad leaves, or they are in and out of the tube-like uh, bark structures because they are so fast. If there's one thing that I want to tell you guys when you're working with Felsuma, that they are an awesome species. They're very prolific. They're very easy to breed, but they're very, very, very fast, and they're very, very, very delicate. They're not a lizard you're going to hold for the most part. They are a lizard that you look at, and when you open up the cage, you open up one side of the door because they are smart enough to learn. They'll learn your habits about when it's feeding time, and they will learn to get closer to the door to try to get out. Um, but providing them a natural in-depth setup that tries to mimic what they like can hopefully inhibit some of that behavior because they are that comfortable in their living setting. So again, there's going to be a hot spot right here that's going to be around that 95 degree mark so we can bask right here. Um, I think I'm going to actually leave this open because I want to give him a lot of different um, options. So as far as offering feeding ledges and things like that, you can use the Pangea Mini Magnetic Jet Gecko Ledge. I offer many different types. Personally, I think I'd put it right here. So that way it's really easy to access as well as really easy to, uh, for, for, for the gecko to reach. As far as the water and the mister, there are two different ways that you can go about making sure that you're providing clean water as well as uh, water that isn't going to ruin your mist king. So I said Miss King. If you have a DA gecko, you should have one of these for sure. Uh, this is one of the, you know, this is one of the best systems in the market, and it's something that is very easy to put together and to use. Uh, they, this, the starter system that includes one nozzle is around $125. If you don't want to go that route, you can always get a hand pump mister. I'm going to have my own line of hand pump misters in about three months. So I'm really excited to launch those. And that's something that you can definitely use as well, um, you know, just to, on a budget. But if you're not using, you know, RO water or distilled water, I highly recommend using some of the Reptisafe. It'll help get the calcium out. Uh, so you won't get calcium deposits on your from your glass as well as it hurts. Uh, I have a lot of people ask me, can you mix different types of day geckos together? And the answer is no. You most of the time you need to keep them separate because they can be very aggressive toward each other. Uh, your, your smaller species tend to be as long as you give them enough room, they tend to be okay. But your larger species, such as the the Madagascar sirensis. Uh, and the grandises, they will rip each other to pieces, um, especially males. Uh, and I also have here one of my nut pods. So I'm actually going to put a nut pod right here. And I'm actually going to have that filled with water. How I'm going to be monitoring the temperature is, one of, with, is with one of my uh, BioDew thermometer hygrometers. And it's what I like to do is with the holes in the back of the exoterra, I'll go and run the wire through the back and move the probe around wherever I want to put it to make it really easy. As far as feeding the day gecko, um, there's a couple different options out there. 
So when you're feeding your insects, you always wanna make sure that, that you're dusting with proper calcium and multivitamins, especially multivitamins that have beta carotene in them. I highly recommend you utilizing my bug rub as well as an insect gut loader if you're keeping insects for a couple days because the more nutrition that's packed into your bugs, the better and more nutritious that it is for your reptile and the longer that they'll live for the most part. Day geckos tend to have a tendency to live five to seven years in captivity. Then as far as food goes, there's a lot of commercial options out there from Pangea to BP Zoological to Zoomed to Exoterra. Um, I don't I know a good amount about animal nutrition, but as far as I know about how what goes into the absorption of vitamins and minerals, as far as compounding different things with these, you know, you know, I leave that to, to the to the experts. Besides, when it comes to insect gut load and things like that, so Exoterra has their own version of the day gecko food, which I've seen get day geckos eat it, and Pangea has a many different flavors. I highly recommend the red with insects because it gives it has black soldier fly larva ground up in there, uh, which it provides new protein content and probably a different type of taste when it comes to. Um, you know their palate because sometimes they can be tricky. They can eat very, very, very tiny dubias, the larger ones, as long as they're soft bodied. The general rule of thumb for feeding is you don't want to feed something bigger than the space in between their eyes, especially for neonatal, neonatal geckos. So I know I talked a lot. I really like how this cage looks. I'm actually going to give it a really solid mist here. And then we're going to go and introduce the, introduce the inhabitant. And again, I really, I'm really happy with, uh, with this. It's, I like having these be sparser on the top for the geckos because that's really what you want. Uh, again, you want it to be nice and sparse uh, on the top levels, but deep and dense in the middle and bottom. And as this grows, it's gonna be really nice. Really, really nice. So last but not least, let's get the, let's get the little dude established. Let's get him put in here. So you can see he's absolutely fired up. So beautiful. Now I'm going to show you guys how fast we are. Be free, dude. There you go. Awesome. There you go, dude. So, like I said, not pictured on here is the heat bulb, the heat dome, and the UVB that is required for this species. And I'm really excited to, to hear, you know, how we end up doing uh, with them. And like other geckos, they can drop their tail. Uh, when they're stressed and then the neurons fire and it wiggles, you know, uh, you know, but they can grow their tails back, which is great. There you go, little dude. Beautiful. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. I have a lot of good things coming up here these next couple months, which a bunch of new products. Uh, Animal Planet, that episode's coming up in two to three weeks, and I couldn't be more grateful for everything, and I love that so many people are going bio. You know, it, it, it's great. It's the only way to keep these awesome animals. So anyway, visit my Facebook, Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit thebiodude.com. And if you're in the area, come to the Biodude Houston, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. The dude divides.